Um, so my, my name is uh, Trent Hawkins. I'm uh, the project director of the buildings team at Beyond Zero Emissions. Um, I'm actually a mechanical engineer and uh, I started out uh, uh, in, in computational modelling for biomedical applications and uh, the onset of climate change made me realise I needed to get into sustainability and um, started do, doing a bit of work at a wind farm developer um, and I got involved in the stationary energy plan which is a, a report I'll talk about in a moment that we completed in 2010 and then came involved in the, the building side. So I didn't really come at it from a, from a building's end to begin with um, but I, I've kind of immersed myself in the last couple of years. Um, Alright, so we'll, we'll get started. The, today this is a talk about the Zero Carbon Australia Buildings Plan. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, um, Beyond Zero Emissions is an independent research and education organisation um, that, that looks into climate change solutions. Um, and it's a non-profit organisation, uh, which means you know, we are independent from government, from you know, the energy companies, and, and we, we depend on donations. And uh, yeah, there we have a table outside here today, if anyone's keen, they're, they're certainly welcome to, to sign up and, and help out by becoming a baseload supporter, or otherwise you can, you can get involved in, in all the elements of our work. Um, and, and yeah, we're volunteer driven. Um, so we're, the, these, what we've been working on for the last few years actually is the Zero Carbon Australia project. Uh, it's this very exciting project which is really uh, looking at the feasibility of decarbonising the entire economy in 10 years. Um, what, what that means it, by decarbonising means that we, we, we want to end up at a point where our economy is emitting no greenhouse gas emissions. We're not offsetting, there's no carbon neutral in here, this is zero, zero emissions. And that's, that's by addressing six different sectors. I've got a pointer on this one. Yep. Um, so the first, the first one uh, is this, the stationary energy plan. And that, found, that, that was completed in 2010 and found that we could in Australia get 100% of our uh, energy demand, stationary energy demand, from renewable energy. Uh, and the primary source of that was, was baseload solar thermal. And if you go outside, there's actually a little working model, well, not entirely working, but it's got some lights on it, of a, of a concentrated solar thermal tower. And you can see exactly what it means. But that's kind of dealt with the supply side. Now we've been looking at buildings and transport, which are the two main demand side areas, and what are the opportunities, both, both for further decarbonisation, but also uh, if, um, how, how can we reduce energy demand substantially. Um, so transport is currently being worked on and that's really looking at how do we reduce our dependence on oil. Uh, and then finally the land use plan is also underway at the moment and that's a really exciting project that's looking at how do we recover I guess the historic emissions in Australia from the destruction of the natural environment and then in addition to that um, sequester carbon to the soil further. And we have other reports be coming out at some point in the future. So, so the Zero Carbon Australia project is sort of premised off a couple of key principles. Uh, the first, as I mentioned, it's a blueprint for zero carbon in 10 years. Uh, as part of that, we fully accept the latest climate science evidence. Um, I'll explain a bit more on that in a moment. But we also, because it's a 10 year plan, we need to pick things that are available today. We're not actually looking at things which might be off, off in the future possibilities. Uh, we, we've got to use the technologies we can buy off the shelf um, that are commercially available. And our projects need to maintain or enhance Australia's energy security, uh, it also food and water security, and standard of living. And in the context of buildings, that's comfort. And we're hoping we can improve um, our comfort as well. <coughs> so the, the cornerstone of Zero Carbon Australia's station energy plan was baseload solar. I don't want to go into too much, but this is actually a technology being uh, built across the world, particularly in the US, China and Spain. Uh, this is not necessarily a new technology, it has actually been around for a long time. The US Department of Energy were one of the key people who helped um, in the early stages of uh, research and development and commercialisation. And this, this is the Terrasol Hemisolar plant in Spain, which finished uh, construction late, late last year, and it's the world's first baseload solar plant. And this operates off molten salt technology, which allows it to bank heat and dispatch it at times when, when it's needed, 
rather than you know, other renewable energy sources which are considered variable. So that, that's actually really important because it, what it means is we can operate within a context where our grid is zero carbon. Um, and this is a real re achievable aim. Uh, and that really changes the, the dynamic. That's, that's a paradigm shift in how we think about buildings from an energy point of view. And in that context, to get zero emissions buildings within 10 years, the key, key task is actually go to zero gas, zero fossil gas uh, usage in buildings, which, which does emit greenhouse gas emissions, even though it's lower than brown and black coal. Uh, but this is something we need to do. Uh, that means we want to have 100% electricity buildings um, from the grid, and, but we want to power those with the renewable energy, both large scale and small scale renewable energy. And, and what we've been looking at in terms of the measures we're adopting is, is we're actually aiming for uh, those measures which are widely applicable uh, that can be implemented across the building stock. Um, so, and, and, and how do, looking at how do we get deep cuts in energy demand, how do we replace gas appliances and services, and how do we generate energy on site. So uh, this is a unique project and actually has involved a very diverse and large number of uh, uh, volunteers, uh, who some of which are experts in the field, others are um, you know, students who want to help out interning for a couple of months. Uh, it's a very diverse range. You know, we have experts in the industry, in various industries, HVAC, um, you know, uh, building design, engineers, architects, etc. And we, we, we feel we've done substantial industry engagement. We've tried to talk to a number of key um, stakeholders about what to do. And also, as part of that, we've really taken on board a number of companies that have uh, been providing us with pro bono contributions, quite substantial ones, um, particularly including energy efficient strategies, uh, GHD, WSP Built Ecology, the Facility Management Association of Australia, VIPAC, Solon Consulting, and, and others as well have provided uh, data as part of the process of developing our building stock model. So I guess, you know, firstly, it's worth asking the question, why bother? I'm sure I don't need to tell anyone here about climate change. You're all, uh, you know, full bottle. Um, but in reality, it's worth reflecting on the fact that the Australian government um, commissioned a report by the Climate Commission called Critical Decade, which is headed by Will Steffen from the ANU. And they, they actually looked at the carbon budget approach, which said if we took as much emissions that we could emit um, to, to avoid uh, crossing a two degree threshold in, in warming and equitably distributed those emissions across the world's population um, that effectively Australia has to decarbonise within 10 years. And if we do nothing, we'll use up our budget in about five years. So that's the level of scale that we're dealing with. And Will Steffen said that the, the, the difference between two degrees and four degrees is human civilization. And the summary, concluding point from this is that the decade between now and 2020 is critical. So I think really that's not something that's actually out there in the mainstream debate, that if we, if we do what the climate science says, we need to do it in 10 years. Uh, obviously, another major factor um, is, is rising energy prices. And this is, this is some modelling we've done looking at uh, residential retail prices uh, across the national energy market sort of average. And, you know, we're, we're seeing in the order of a 50% increase in energy price, electricity prices to 2020. And this is something reflected in every, every sector, as well as you know, commercial. But on the flip side, energy efficiency is working. And this is a really interesting graph from the Australian Energy Market Operator um, that came out in March. And they were looking at their energy forecasting for their next set of reports. And they, they had been forecasting the yellow line, which is sort of 1% to 2% growth per annum out into the future. And then they were actually measuring the orange bit there. And, and not only was it flatlining, it was substantially dropping. And their latest report is showing that, uh, that there's been a reduction of about 5.7% in energy demand over the last couple of years, with a large portion of that coming from energy efficiency and solar photovoltaic. Uh, also, today, in today's terms, you know, uh, our energy se uh, building sector you know, still consume lots of energy, aren't, aren't as efficient as they could be. Um, there's a lot of stuff there, but you know, suffice to say that you know, a large chunk of the pie is space heating, and particularly space heating in Victoria. Uh, hot water um, are the two main ones, you know, plus electrical appliances, which is sort of captured in the other category 
uh, representing the order of 35% of our uh, energy consumption. And, and you know, lighting is, is a large component, still a reasonably large component of that. And residential is, is 11% of Australia's energy use, 12% of our emissions, and about 50% of it is actually electricity, and 33% and is gas. Looking at the commercial sector, this is some older data from, from the year two, uh, 2004, looking at 2000. Um, it obviously has improved since then, but still very large portion of energy use in lighting, uh, in hot water space, space conditioning, heating and particularly cooling. Um, and, and you know, commercial, the commercial sector is, is actually a really easy opportunity because 72% of it is actually electricity. So I guess what, what I want to do is, is look at a few example buildings and, and some of the modelling we've been doing and the results we're getting. Um, so firstly, here's a, here's a brick veneer house in Melbourne. Uh, we've also got an um, example office in Brisbane and, and a shopping centre in Sydney. None, we haven't directly modelled these places, so don't get up, put up and say, oh, that Stockholm's one's really great. It's just, it's just showing you some pictures. <laughs> um, but yeah, are, you're know, looking at where they, they sit on the, the scale of energy consumption. Um, on the top is our houses, and that's, that's about 206 megajoules of energy use per day. Um, underneath that, on, the, on, the, on your left-hand side, is, is office, at about 29 gigajoules per day, and then a shopping centre, about 48 gigajoules per day. So if we, we you know, one of the key areas mentioned is lighting. Um, I'm sure everyone here is sort of being seen that 2012 is really a, a kind of pivotal, pivotal year in solid state lighting. Um, LED technologies are you know, really a revolutionary um, uh, technology, and uh, the this light on the right, on the top right there is actually uh, the L Prize winner of the U.S. Department of Energy. Um, this is a 10 watt bulb that can replace an old 60 watt um, incandescent, um, but has substantially greater light output. Um, so you know, in this. The, based on the, what the US Department of Energy is saying, that in, in 10 years this light will probably only be about 4 or 5 watts. And already the, the down lights, you know, in, in the order of 10 watts can go down to 2 or 3 watts. Um, and, and there's a range of other options as well. So by, by taking 